the origin of the instability of transition metal alkyls is frequently the following reaction. If you start off with a titanium dialkyl species, so this is a titanium dialkyl species, diethyl titanium, doesn't really matter at this stage what the other R ligands are. If you have a compound like that, then what you've got are two ethyl ligands. Now, ethyl ligand bound, so we've drawn out one of these ethyl ligands, titanium CH2, CH3. Now, what you have, if you have a CH3, is what we call a beta hydrogen. So this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon, this is a hydrogen bonded to the beta carbon. Now, this hydrogen bonded to a beta carbon can interact with a transition metal center. Now, this is possible in transition metal centers and not possible in main group complexes. The reason is because transition metal complexes have additional vacant orbitals. So there's an, an orbital that's not being used in tetraethyl titanium, and that orbital can coordinate this beta hydride. The next step is more than coordination. It's actually the beta hydrogen migrating to the transition metal center. What we're doing is forming a new titanium hydride bond and liberating an equivalent of alkene. So the first step in the decomposition of one of these titanium alkyls is the formation of a titanium hydride and an equivalent of alkene. When you have a hydrido-alkane complex like this, these hydrido-alkyl complexes are themselves reactive. And what happens is the hydride bit and the alkyl bit clip together in a process known as reductive elimination. So if reductive elimination occurs, the hydride and the alkyl clip together to make an alkane. Why is this process called reductive elimination? Anybody like to guess? What's the oxidation state of titanium in this complex here? It's titanium in oxidation state 4. What's the oxidation state of titanium in this complex here? 2. So this has gone from titanium 4 to titanium 2. It's gone from 4 coordinate to 2 coordinate. And we call that process reductive elimination. So the clipping together of these is reductive elimination. Now, there is a telltale pattern occurring here. This chemistry has eliminated one equivalent of alkene in a beta hydride elimination step and one equivalent of alkane in a reductive elimination step. So whenever you have a transition metal alkyl and you think it might be decomposing through this mechanism, you can test for that. And you can test for that using, say, mass spectrometry. So if you use mass spectrometry, you'll be able to detect an alkene and an alkane. And whenever you detect those two together, that's screaming at you that the process is decomposition by beta hydride elimination followed by reductive elimination. Now, how can one avoid that happening? How can one avoid that happening? Well, there are two or more strategies to doing this. One of the strategies that you can employ is to essentially go to 18 electrons. So if you go to a transition metal alkyl complex that has 18 electrons, essentially what you've done when you get to 18 electrons is you said all the orbitals are filled. Okay? So if all the orbitals are filled with electrons, then there's no way that the alkyl group can come round in a beta agostic interaction and bind to the transition metal center. And so if you have a complex like this, this is an 18 electron complex and it's perfectly stable. Now, what else can we do? Beta hydride elimination, the clue is in the name. Okay, the clue is in the name. What do all of these alkyl ligands have in common? They all look quite different. Here's a methyl group, here's a benzyl group, here's a neopentyl group. What do all of these groups here have in common? This is a trimethyl silyl methyl group. This is a bis trimethyl silyl group. This is a tris trimethyl silyl group. These are phenyl ligands. What do they all have in common? Maybe I should rephrase the question. Maybe I should ask you, what do they all have absent in common? Not one of them contains a beta hydride. Of course, if you've got no beta hydrogen, you can't have beta hydride elimination. 
And if you don't get beta hydride elimination, you don't make a hydride, you don't get reductive elimination of your species. So that is another way of stabilizing these species. So we've got electronic stabilization, we've got avoidance of having beta hydrides in the first place. 